Hey guys, welcome to Legacy Church Online. We are so excited that you've decided to join us today. We've got a great message planned for you. So if you would, grab your Bible, grab a pad of paper and a pen and get ready to write a few things down. I'm pumped to give this message of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm looking forward to it. So put your seatbelts on. Let's get ready. This is going to be so great to worship together online. Parents, if you have your kids here, uh, they are welcome to hang out here as long as they like. You just have to take them with you when you leave. So that's the good news. We are going to be in Acts chapter 19 today, if you've got a Bible. Uh, we say this every single week, and I want to... Uh, I'm Bruce, by the way. If I've never met you before, I'm so glad that you're here to join us. Uh, as well as those of you who are online... Uh, Bruce Rounds, and uh, I'm thrilled to be able to minister to you uh, and just have a conversation with you this morning. Uh, so we say this every week. This is my Bible. I include you to, uh, to invite you, rather, to speak this with me. Um, say, this is my Bible. This is my Bible. Come on, say, this is my Bible. This is my Bible. I do what it says I should do. I do what it says I should do. Say what it tells me to say. Say what it tells me to say. Know where it tells me to go. Know where it tells me to go. And I live how it tells me to live. Well, you know what would be so fun is if uh, America, 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 we can say that this morning, America, come on, say America. It would be fun if America actually lived and did and said, went and where this Bible told us. Uh, we have had several subjects in the course of the series that we're in called The Actions of Acts. And uh, we, we, we're like in week 16 or something of this particular series. We've just been trying to unpack the entire book of Acts. And I want to just show you a list of all the different subject matters in which we've covered, which I'm omitting several different subjects uh, at this point. But we talked about our mission from God, an average day as a Christian, boldness, honesty, leadership, kingdom advancement, change or transformation. Diversity, prayer, worship. We talked about the church being the church. We talked about the early church, how it met, what, what it looked like, how it felt, uh, where, where they went at 3 o'clock and 9 o'clock, and what it looked like uh, when people turned away from sin and went forward and got baptized and living out their faith, and all of the different subjects that we, we, we've not even covered thoroughly the book of Acts. Just a high, this is like flying over the book of Acts at 13,000 feet, taking a look at this entire book and pulling out nuggets from it that will help us grow as Christians. Now, here's what I want to tell you. For those of you who are, are new with us and your first time here, I don't want you to be weirded out, okay? Give us a try. Keep coming for a few weeks at least and kick the tires um, uh, of legacy, kick the tires of faith. We're just... I, I want to put our hands, I'm super, super excited because we've got some new folks in the house today. And I just want to put our hands together again and make sure that we're all Now, if, if you've got a Bible, uh, I invite you to go to Acts chapter 19. If you don't have one, of course, you can pull out your iPhone, which is way better than Android. Look at your iPhone, or you can look at your eyelids right here. I'm going to have it on the screen. But I do want to preface something and tell you that today's subject matter is going to be heavy. Come on, say heavy. 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 We're going to get heavy. So what I'd like to do as a minister, as we get heavy this morning, is let you know that I'm an interactive type of person, type of preacher, and I love when the body of Christ comes together and we get interactive with one another. If I notice that you're getting a little drowsy, that means I'm going to speak a little faster, a little bit loud. So I just want you to be aware of that going into today's sermon. Acts 19, I, I, I was going to go into Acts 18 this morning, and I found that because that's technically where we would be. I just, I, I kept, like, the Spirit of God kept calling me back to Acts 19. I've I got to go back to this, this series of verses, and the subject matter, which we're going to put the title here in just a second. We're going to talk about the supernatural, the spiritual warfare that goes on all around us all the time. Now, for many of you, when you went to well, kids' ministry as a kid, you, you know, you learned a lot of things at elementary level, but we're going to go deep, we're going to go heavy, we're going to go literally, for some of you, if you're kind of kicking the tires of faith, we're going to go into the deep end of the pool this morning. 
I want to tell you I'm going to share some stories with you that I normally don't preach about. Okay? So get ready, strap in, strap, like buckle your seatbelt because we're going to go deep. You ready to do it? Yeah. Let's go deep. I'm going to pray and we're going to show you what we're going to talk about. Jesus, we thank you so much for every single life. We thank you because how great is our God? That's not a question mark. That's an exclamation point. Yeah. You are so amazing, Lord Jesus. We thank you for being our Redeemer, our Savior, our Rescuer. We thank you for conquering the grave so that we have new life today. We pray for your Holy Spirit to fall on this place, for you to counsel us, for those of us who are hurting or weak or, or, or healing. Lord, that you would come and surround this place. We bind Satan as servants, their works and effects and on all levels and all dimensions, all the principalities. We cast it out of this place. Not only out of this place, but out of this community. And it has no place here. We claim the blood of Christ over us, Jesus. As Christians, and for every single person who might be skeptical, God, we pray that as they walk out of here, they would consider you that much more. Our mind is open, our heart is ready, and we are ready to walk free in you indeed, Jesus Christ. In your name we pray, everybody said. Amen. Amen. The title of my sermon this morning is The Acts of Supernatural. If you're a note taker, you can write this down. I put a little tagline behind it. It's making hard choices. Making hard life choices. Now, our pastor and I talked quite a bit here several months ago about this particular series of verses. And we wrote a sermon. I was just like, okay, so you, you go ahead and you, 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 know, you preach this sermon. And then uh, sometime when the time is right, I'm going to preach this sermon. And now the time is right. And I kept coming back to this particular series of verses. And I want to tell you this. That we are on one of two teams. This is where it gets heavy. We are either on one of two teams. We can't be on both. We are either on team good or the team bad. We are either on team God or team devil. Good, bad, right, wrong, God, Satan. It's one or the other. It's one of those, these two teams that we're on. That's the reality of this life. In our spirituality, we are either on one of the two. It breaks down to that. Now, I'm going to give you a preface statement before we get into the Word this morning. And I want to, I, I'm just, I, I'm excited because I, I know that some non-Christians may view this sermon. And I pray that by hearing this Word, you would consider Christ that much more. Here's my preface before we even get to the text. Christians and non-Christians alike have so many options and choices today, don't we? Yeah. Anything we watch, we listen to, we purchase, we acquire, we participate in, can either be blessed and godly, or it can have a demonic spirit, spirit attached to it. We worked at a thrift store for a period of time, just a little freelance thrift store in my wife and I. And we would notice that there would be clothing and all these different possessions that would come into a thrift store that would have to be kind of cleaned up, hung up at their clothes, and you know, organized just a little bit. And it was always so spiritually thick. Have you ever been in a situation where something is so spiritually thick? It's, ooh, creepy. Ugh. Think about this preface statement. When you're watching like a zombie movie and then you go to bed, it's like, ugh. I feel like yuck. Right? Ooh. <laughs> I want to tell you that I have seen movies like this, and oftentimes I come back and I think to myself, sometimes this is the way Christianity can be. Sometimes, and I, and I mean this in a loving, graceful way. By the way, you're in a grace church. Yeah. So we're going to give a lot of grace and a lot of love and a lot of hope, a lot of spirit-filled experience for you this morning. Amen. But I want you to hear, because we're life-giving, I want you to hear sometimes in Christianity, it seems like this is, this is how we are. We go through the motions, and it's like an old zombie movie. Let you know that Brad and 
Dokken and the Scorpions and Metallica. All of that stuff, that's me. That's how, that's, that's how I'm wired. If I have a choice of what radio station I'm going to tune into, it's either the worship channel or it's that channel. It's 80s rock. That's who I am. Pearl Jams, Soundgarden, I'm all over it. Okay? That's who I am. But here's the deal. When we are living a life watching and listening and purchasing and acquiring and participating in things that are not less than godly, there can be demonic spirits attached to it. And when we choose to participate, to watch, to listen, and get involved in, we end up in divorce and depression and discouragement because there's sin issues that are attached to it. Here's the deal. We're on one of two teams. Team Jesus or Team Darkness. Now let's get to the text. Acts chapter 19. We're going to begin in verse 13. Go through 16. It says this, that there's a group of Jews. They were traveling from town to town, casting out evil spirits. I'm just going to stop this for a moment. They're using the name of Jesus... That's a little bit of a joke. So I don't know. I, I need to stop because sometimes you might see a video. You might watch a movie and somebody takes, well, we say it takes the name of, the, of, of God in vain. Where they say, well, JC. Or they say, OMG. And we say, hey, 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 don't take the name of God in vain. Right? Blasphemy. These guys go, oh, okay, so, now, this, now, mind you, this is around 70 A.D. when this is going on. So Jesus has already conquered the great ascended into heaven. And here we have a group of Jews traveling from town to town, and they're casting out evil spirits, like in a joking way, a mockery way. And they, it, the scripture says they, they tried to use the name of the Lord Jesus in their incantation, saying, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ, who Paul preaches, come out. Like a joke. Scripture keeps going. Here's what it says. Seven sons of Sceva. Sceva is a leading priest. They were doing this. Casting out demons. Well, one time, when they tried it, look at what happens. This is really cool. The evil spirit replied. It, it spoke. Notice that spirits can speak. And it says this. I know Jesus, and I know Paul. But then I underline this. But who are you? Well, we claim we have Jesus living inside of us. Right? The demon spoke. Remember, the devil knew scripture. The devil spoke scripture to Jesus. The demon spoke, and he said, yeah, I know Paul. And I know Jesus. Who in the world do you think you are? <laughs> hmm? Oh, yeah. You say you think you've got Jesus in you? you got, if you've got Jesus in you, let Jesus know this right here in this house this morning. Let Jesus know. <laughs> so you're on one of two teams. And I put in parentheses here, darkness and evil knows who whose team you're on. They know that you're, if, if you're on God's team or if you're faking it. I have to mention this, that there are many times that we say in our head, even with our mouth, that we believe in Jesus Christ, but we've not received him into our heart. We've not allowed him in us. You're not one or two teams. You're on good, bad, right, wrong, God, Satan. One of two teams. We can't be both. So I want to go to the dark side just for a second. I'm going to give you a crash course in demonology. First point, if you're taking notes, demons are real. Can we put this up? Demons are real. And we are in a war. Remember I told you this is going to be heaven. We're in a war against hell. This is the bottom line. As Christians, we are in a war. That's why the book of Ephesians says to put on the armor of God every day. When you get up, put on the armor of God because we are in a war. Demons are real. So let's give you a little crash course in demonology before we get to the good stuff, the better stuff. 
Demons are angels who are cast out of heaven to help Satan in defense to rebel against God. The Bible says it in Revelation 12 and Isaiah 14. If you, you may be aware of this, that Satan, Lucifer, the worship leader, took a third of the angels with him when he was cast out. Daniel 7.10 says myriads. Myriads is millions upon millions upon millions. And the Bible even says times 10,000. So it's millions and billions and billions and billions of angels are surrounding the throne room of God all the time, every day, saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Amen. But here's what, here's what dawned on me. Do you know... That if the devil can't get at me as a pastor, you know who he goes after? The worship team. He was the worship leader. So he goes after the worship team. And I don't think God, when he cast them out, I don't think God just sat there discouraged and depressed and all, 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 all frustrated going, oh man. No, evil can't be in the presence of God. Sin can't be in the presence of God.
your soul last forever. You've got two teams. Team Jesus, or Team Bad, Team Darkness. Now, I don't want to sensationalize evil. I don't want to take and exalt anything about demonology. We are here to exalt Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Amen in the house. Amen. Amen. You're still awake. Point number two I would give you is this. Examine your faith. Examine your own faith. According to the scripture, we're going to get back to the text in a moment. You hang in there. Examine your own faith. See, this is what demons can do is they can prompt you, tempt you, to start examining everybody else's faith. I don't know if you've ever been tempted to do this, but you'll look at somebody else and go, oh, yeah, they're probably just a 101 Christian. A baby. They don't really know the scriptures yet. I doubt that they pray very often. But the Bible talks about examining our own inventory. Looking at our side of the street. Looking at our faith. Our own faith. Not our neighbors. Hubbies and wives. Don't elbow your spouse. This is a moment where we look and go, you know what? This is our faith. Our individuality. The only thing that lasts forever is you. So it's our role individually to examine our own faith. We're in life. As a human being, as a man in life, I might be a preacher, but I'm still a human being. I have to examine myself. Am I acting right, saying right? Do I own a man? Did I think right? Am I thinking properly in this moment? And we could get into a whole big deal about how to measure your thoughts and measure your heart, measure your soul. But the deal is this. Many people invoke Jesus' name, and this is what the Jews were doing in the text. But they don't actually follow Jesus. And they end up powerless and defeated. Notice what it says in 2 Corinthians 13, 5. Examine yourself. To see whether you are in the faith, test yourself. Come on, say, test myself. Test myself. Do, do you not realize that Christ is in you? Amen. He's in you. If he's in you, come on, say, he's in me. 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 Unless, of course, you fail the task. See, the Jews are using the name of Jesus Christ, invoking his name like a big joke. Now, there are different ideas people have about God. As I mentioned at, at the preface, that this is going to be a pretty heavy subject. So I want to give you a whole list of ideas and beliefs and choices that people make about how they view God. I'm going to give you a whole bunch of big old theology proper words today. The first one is dynamism, and it means that there, it's a life energy pervading all things. That's how some people see God. There's animism. All nature is God. I don't know if you've ever met anybody who, who believes it this way. Or when I go out to my deer stand, that's my God. When I'm out to my fishing boat, that's my God. Now, I will say this. To those fishermen and hunter, uh, hunters out there, because that's what I do for fun, uh, uh, outdoorsmen, I will tell you this, that I definitely hear Jesus when I'm alone and quiet out there in nature. I definitely hear the word of the Lord most when I'm out in a fishing boat, but that's not God. God is not my boat, not the lake. There's fetishism. I remember a lady who collected shoes. Oh, under her desk, it stunk so bad. <laughs> it's a spirit or an object because, well, God is there in my fetish, but then he can leave there. Other beliefs that we have is idolatry. We have a lot of idolatry today in America. It's a worship of an object, object made by men. I do have this word, kind of a bigger word called monolatry. And it means the worship of a special, singled out object made by man. My cell phone. Made by man. Ooh, that's my God. There he is. I, I, I'm sorry. I, I'm grace filled, but I, get, I want you to have a life giving spirit. There are so many times we get on our phone and it's like, this is my entire day, my entire life, my entire connection point. All my relationships are right here. Do you realize how many apps I have on my phone and how long it took to download all those different apps that I have on my phone? And I've got to check Tic Tac. And I've got to check Instagram, and I've got to check Facebook, and I've got to check Pinterest, and I've got to check all these different things to make sure that all of my social networking, and then I view how popular I am in the world, about how many likes I get, and how many comments are, hey, guess what, I got 13 likes on my post today. Can you believe that? My lottery. Worship a special symbol of object made by man. Then we have even more polytheism, which is worship of many gods, 
Then you've got a version of that called henotheism, which is the worship of a special god, single out from the worship of many gods, polytheistic view. Theology proper. Whoa. Dualism. Two gods, one good, one bad. Then there's tritheism, which is a perversion of the Trinity, that there's three separate gods in Christianity. So we've got God the Father, God the Son, Holy Spirit, all three gods. Then you have pantheism, which is God is everything, but nothing but God really exists, not even you. People believe this one. There's panentheism, which is God is more than everything. The being of God penetrates the whole universe, and every part exists in his being. <coughs> Woo! Even just a few more little viewpoints here of how people see God. There's deism, where God is impersonal. And boy, I, I, I would, I just, it, it, the thought of that, of God not being personal, I wouldn't want to follow God if he wasn't, if I didn't have a personal connection with God, right? Amen. God created the whole world and then he just left it. Good luck, see ya, peace out, bye-bye, Felicia. Right. <laughs> then there's monotheism, one supreme being, one God, that's it, one supreme being. There was no Jesus, there is no Holy Spirit, there's just one God. There are religions that believe that. There's atheism. But you know there's no God. You've never heard me tell this story. Just briefly, I had a guy stand on the corner with a big sign saying, there is no God. Let's get that guy a water, make sure that he understands that he's cared for. Maybe one day he'll come to Christ. And then, of course, we have the Trinity, which is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the Godhead, three in one. It is here that we are to worship this belief of this one God who is three in one. What letter did you choose? What letter did you choose? Come on, church. You can. Oh, oh. oh my, oh my, oh my. <laughs> Here's my question. Are you doing? As you examine your own faith, as you look at you, what in your belief it is your belief about God? What 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 do you see? How do you see? We choose all. We choose all. I'll give you one more, and then we're going to get back to the text. Jesus' name for the true Christ follower brings victory. Yeah. I love this passage in verse John 4, 4. It says, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Do you know what that means? Yeah. Greater is he, Jesus Christ, who resurrected, conquered the grave, who moved and resides inside of your heart, than he, the devil, who was cast out and sent to the earth. Isn't this good news? Yeah. Philippians 2, 10 through 11 says that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth. Ooh, this is going to be good. And under the earth, every tongue acknowledges that Jesus Christ is the Lord to the glory of God the Father. You know what this means? One way or another, whatever team we are on, one way or another, every knee will bow. At the name of Jesus, every knee will bow. Even the demons will bow at the name of Jesus. My wife and I, uh, years ago, we led a recovery meeting, and we were at this uh, little Methodist church, and we were setting up tables, and we had the food all set up, and I'm like, we're a faith-based recovery group, and so we had all the food set up, and all these tables set up, and, and the people were starting to come in, it was great, and we were getting ready, and, and the band was, was starting to rehearse just a little bit, and all of a sudden, this guy, we didn't know if it was meth or something spiritual, he just absolutely freaked out. He freaked out, he started flipping over tables, and he's just screaming and hollering, like trying to rip off his shirt. And a bunch of us are like trying, and he's like throwing punches, and he's just like, oh, 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 oh. and stuff just was coming out of his mouth, and spitting, it's like, oh. He said the name of Jesus, and he just quieted right now. I'm like, oh, that's not meant. <laughs> Of course, we had to call the ambulance. They took him away. Either way, every knee will bow every time we say the name of Jesus. Anytime somebody is hung up, possession and oppression look similar, but they're completely different. And 
anytime somebody is either oppressed by what they participate in, watch, listen to, participate in, if they are oppressed or possessed, when you say the name of Jesus, they get quiet. One way or another, every knee will bow. Let's get back to the text. Here's where we pick up in verse 17. The story of what happened. The Jews casting out demons. Okay? And making a big mockery of it. Story of what happened. Demons given a beat down. Spread, spread quickly all through Ephesus. And the Jews and the Greeks alike. A solemn fear descended on the city. Now, I don't know about where you are in life, but can you, can, can you agree that there is a lot of fear out there in the world today? Guess where that comes from? We don't have fear, we have faith. Amen. Fear descended on the city in the name of the Lord Jesus was greatly honored. And many who, came to, uh, who, who became believers confessed their sinful practices. And I underline that specifically because many times we say with our head, and even with our mouth, Jesus is Lord, but haven't received him into our heart. And because of that, we go around and we say, Jesus, 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 I believe in Jesus. Do you believe in Jesus? I, I'm a Jesus believer. But we haven't followed him yet. And they started confessing their sinful practices. This is where the story kind of gets interesting because it says a number of them who had been practicing sorcery, they brought their incantation of books and burned them at a public bonfire. So they had all these witchcraft books, and they brought them to a big old bonfire. Let's burn them up, because the powerful name of Jesus is more powerful than this stupid witchcraft book. So they start burning. I just saw some things in my Bible. Then it says the value of those books was several million dollars. They invested a lot into the evil, into the darkness. And we can be tempted to invest a lot into sinful practices today. There are a lot of commercials that will promote, amen? Hey, buy this little thing. It's going to be good for you. It's full of sin. So what does this mean practically for us when we, when we study through the text? I would tell you this, that. With love and grace, stop entertaining yourself with the enemy and get rid of the things that attract the demonic. This is, this is where it gets heavy, guys. We entertain the demonic. We're like, let's get a video game where we're shooting people. Let's just blow them down. Do you know how many times that Diane and I, Diane and I can share different stories of where we've been in counsel with people and we'll have a, a discussion about how their marriage is going and, and they're fighting, they're just like, Arr! and we get home. And if we didn't pray it off on the way home, all of a sudden we get home, we start fighting about the same thing that they were fighting about. Yeah. Like, wait a second, hold on, hold on, wait, why, why are we fighting about money? They were struggling with money, why are we fighting about money? Hang on, Di. Pray. Yeah. Oh, yeah. in the name of Jesus. Hey, now we're, give me a smooch. <laughs> hey, by the way, I do this a lot at church, so if you've got a spouse here in the room, give them a smooch. This is my beauty. I love you. All right. When we entertain things that are of the demonic, we got to get rid of these things. Notice what it says in 1 Thessalonians. 5, 2, 23, but test all things. Test the thing that you bought at the thrift store. Test the brand new thing that you picked up at Walmart. Test the brand new thing that you're looking at on Instagram, on Facebook. Test it. Is it holy? Is it good? Is it pleasing to the Lord Jesus Christ? If it isn't, you've got to test that and get rid of that junk. And I'm talking about tarot cards and dream catchers and all that other yucky junk that we captured. We think, oh, how cool it would be to have a seance. That'd be great. Let's resurrect the lamp candles. By the way, when you see, when, when you hear stories of like somebody fell asleep and they saw this dark shadow standing at the end of the room, and it must be grandma. That ain't grandma. <laughs> Abstain from all forms of evil. Yeah, but you go, yeah, pastor, so Mr. Smarty Pants, you're a human being. It's just a little weed. Just a couple of hits of weed doesn't do anything wrong. I'm not doing anything. I'm not doing anything evil. It's just a little snort of cocaine. It's just a 
Just a little bit of porn. Mm. Look at Deuteronomy. This is the Old Testament. This is what it says. Let no one be found among you who sacrifices their son or daughter in the fire. Please don't do that. Who practices divination or sorcery, interprets omens, engages in witchcraft, or casts spells, or who's a medium, or a medium or a spiritist. A lot of times people are like, I can't get the answer that I'm looking for, so I'm going to go see a medium and see if they can't interact for me so I can get the answer I'm looking for that I can't get from God. Or anybody who consults with the dead. Anyone who does these things, detestable to the Lord. Ugh. Because of these same detestable practices, the Lord your God will drive out those nations before you, and you must be blameless before the Lord your God. In other words, the Canaanites, if you know the Old Testament, the Canaanites were not given the promised land because they were given in to their sinful practices, so God gave it to the Israelites. That's the Old Testament. Let's take a look at the New Testament just for a moment in regard to sinful practices and the demonic, the rest of the mankind who were not killed. This is, when, this is what the world is going to look like, by the way, when Jesus comes back. The rest of mankind who were not killed by the plagues still did not repent of the work of their hands. They did not stop worshiping demons, the idols of gold, silver, bronze, stone, and wood, idols that cannot see or hear or walk. Nor did they repent of their murders, their magical arts, which we know the word is pharmacos or pharmakia, drug use, their sexual immorality, or their thefts. They didn't repent. There's two teams, guys. There's either good, bad, right, wrong, God, or Satan. That's just the bottom line. It's real heavy. Real heavy today. But what team are we on? If we truly believe and we truly follow Jesus Christ, then we acknowledge and say, wait a second, that thought that wants to come into my head, that participation in that event that wants to come into my life, no, that thing that's tempting me on the internet, I'm not going to participate in that because that's not godly. It's not of him. And here's how this text ends. I want you to see in Acts 19 verse 20, it says this. same way the word of the Lord spread widely and grew in power and a powerful effect. Because the Jews had gone out and they mocked and they were using the name of Jesus in vain to cast out demons like a joke end up experiencing this moment of conviction where the spiritual the Holy Spirit hey, turn the other way so they get rid of all their stuff. They burned it. They get rid of all the evil in their life. And Jesus shows up magically and powerfully and purposefully. Which gets me to my last point. We don't exist, guys, to just resist the devil. That's not why we're Christian. We don't believe in Jesus, so we just avoid doing evil. We exist because we're called to advance the good. We're called to advance the kingdom of God. Amen? Yeah. This is what we're asked to do in the Bible. Love God, love people. Make disciples of all nations. Baptizing them in the name of the fathers. So what's the thing that's in your life that's got to go? What's got to go? What's got to go? What is not pleasing to the Lord? What is not purposeful and holy to God right now that's got to go? What do you got to get rid of in your life that you know? This is, believe me, examine myself, right? Examine what, your heart and your life. What's in your home? Guys, it's got to go. See, it's not just simply saying no to the devil. It's saying yes to Jesus. Yeah. Yes, Jesus. I'm going to follow you. I'm going to trust you. I'm going to believe in you. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to go wherever you go. I'm going to do whatever you ask me to do. I'm going to say whatever you ask me to say. I'm going to live how you tell me to live. It's not just about avoiding evil. It's saying yes to Jesus. And I'm going to listen to your will, Father, and go wherever you want me to go and do whatever you want me to do. Amen. Amen. So I just want to give you just a little bit of a recap. A little challenge that we're going to be wrapped up this morning. And it's this. Choose which side of the spiritual war you are. I, I really think that either here or online, somebody is doing listening to this right now, 
We either have to choose, we, we have to choose one side or the other. Let's say yes, Jesus, with my everything. We can't be both. We can't waffle on the fence. You can choose today, or you can do it later, but every knee is going to bow at some point. We can make it right with others and God. Get baptized, dedicate our kids, serve at church, and you can start a Bible study. But I just put in parentheses, show the enemy what team you're really on. Yeah. If you're a believer in Jesus, you show him, I believe in him. I believe in Jesus Christ, my Lord. I want to I share with you, stop being afraid to worship Jesus Christ. Yeah. Stop being afraid of having to come to church with a group of people. Church is essential. We talk, we've been talking about all these essential businesses that have to stay open. You know what's the most essential? Yeah, the, church. The, the church of Jesus Christ. On this floor, I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Amen in this house. Yeah. 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 The church is essential. Yeah. Grow your rope. This is what I would tell you. Look down your rope. There are a couple empty seats in this house today. Grow your rope. we got an Easter service on, on April 4th. Bring somebody with you. I got a family member, a friend, somebody in my life that I know needs Jesus. I'm gonna bring them with me. Grow my rope. By the way, I put in parentheses, ham tastes just as good at four o'clock. <laughs> Some people will skip out on Easter service because they're like, yeah, well, I put in the ham because I'm gonna have a one o'clock Easter brunch at my house. You can do it at four. <laughs> hey guys, thanks again so much for joining us this morning. We hope you enjoyed that message. That's all the time that we have for you today. Don't forget to check out our Facebook, our YouTube, and our Instagram channel at Legacy Church MN. And then you can also visit our website, LegacyChurchMN.com. God bless you. There's nothing more powerful than His Word. Have a great day. We'll see you next time.